Hello people, it is this is this We've got a funky out of format video for my channel's normal theme. Uh, it's time we had a little talk. You know what I found in your laundry? I'm just kidding. If you're in a Mitsubishi that's older than 2003 and you service it yourself, this might be the most important video you've ever seen in my series. I know I'm not in my garage for this video, um, but a fellow YouTuber and friend gifted me this poster for a background so I could bring the garage inside with me. Thank you, because it sets the mood. Helps me stay on topic with what I'm about to talk about in this video. Of course, I say that before I ramble off on a million other topics, but it all comes back together, trust me. This is my folder full of receipts for every single part I've ever bought for the GSX and every bit of service performed, whether I did it or someone else did. There's a lot of time, money, effort, and love in this folder. I know somebody's going to ask if I've ever added it all up. No, I never want to, seriously. It's a lazy man's journal, not a bank register. Occasionally I have to go through here to reference something, and uh, after 10 straight years of modifying this thing, it's become a bit overwhelming. Uh, I'm actually at the point where this needs to be subfolders, perhaps even on a flash drive. I've also got a couple of titles here for uh, some of the cars that I've owned or scrapped, and I'm going to use them for this video. If you're going to put an engine together yourself and you need a parts list, it won't just build itself. Most everything outside of gaskets won't come in a kit. Nobody will enjoy doing it for you for free. Nobody knows your equipment that your car has better than you do. The dealerships love it when you hand them a list or a spreadsheet of part numbers. Many of the part numbers or even the parts themselves have been revised over the years and while it may give them some trouble finding the parts, they'd rather have that list of parts from you than to have you stand at the counter with them for as long as possible to pick out all the parts you need. Some of the dealerships have options to give you a discount on larger orders and you're more likely to receive that if you make their job as easy as possible. So it will be cheapest to find all the parts yourself. It might take a bit longer, but it's not their car. It's yours. Your build will only be as accurate as the time you put into it. It's that simple. A good rule of thumb in life is price, quality, and speed. Pick two. You can't have all three. You'll hear a lot of people say that, and they're all brilliant people. What's the first thing they ask for you at the parts counter? That's right. What's your VIN number? You will find an astonishing number of DSMers that built their own cars that have their VIN numbers memorized. If you have to look something up repeatedly by a 14 digit code, you'll eventually have it memorized. Those guys are diehard enthusiasts and you'll want to pay attention to them. But information is timeless and sometimes the way you get to that information is not. Sometimes the actual device that contains information becomes obsolete, especially where electronic information is concerned. The device that contains it may even be fully functional. For instance, 8 tracks, floppy disks, slide films, zip drives, CDs, I call that bite rot. I'm using a 10 year old computer to demonstrate this software it will run on pretty much anything as long as XP compatibility is still supported. You can't use a Mac for this, it requires Windows. I'm not even running XP or anything as new as XP, this just illustrates that pretty soon you'll have to maintain an old obsolete computer or at least a virtual machine if you want access to this software. This is Mitsubishi Caps, that stands for Computer Automated Parts Search. What this lets you do is enter your VIN number, and then you can select parts from an exploded visual diagram of your car. It returns part numbers based on its own internal database, which are specific to your exact VIN number. Not all VIN numbers are in here. For instance, this is for a 90 Plymouth Laser. You're far more likely to find information on Mitsubishi VIN numbers than you will with Eagle, Dodge, or Plymouth. But some of those VINs are in here too. Even if your car isn't, you can still get good information based on comparable Mitsubishi models. So here's a VIN number for a Dodge Colt. Notice I wasn't able to pick the vehicle designation out, and I have to select Mirage. It's because the VIN is a Dodge, and Mirage is the Mitsubishi equivalent. Everything else about it, it was able to determine by the VIN. Now if you click into the illustration field, it takes you to what looks like a microfish catalog, one annoying feature you'll learn to live with is how it doesn't recognize larger displays and always shows each new screen in a tiny zoomed out preview. There are three buttons at the top that let you zoom in on what it's showing. For instance, if you need a whole short block for a Dodge Colt or Mitsubishi Mirage, you can select it from the main engine group and then the short block group, and it will give you all the applicable part numbers for the whole short block assembly. You can see it doesn't know if it's a federal or a California emissions car based on the VIN, again because it's a Dodge but all of these parts are for the complete short block that would work. This part selection is a bad example because you're never going to do this. But this is roughly how the software works. 
If you click the right illustration field, it takes you to the subgroup of whatever main group is listed in the left field. The return button on the screen takes you back to the main group list. Let's say we need some parts for a cylinder head that we're about to install. We're in the engine group right now. Click the cylinder head subgroup and it gives you an exploded view of service parts. Whenever there's a box drawn around a group of parts, it means that all of those parts are included whenever you select that box. We don't need a whole cylinder head gasket kit, so what we're going to do is just select the head gasket. There you go, part numbers in the white field. When there are part substitutions, sometimes you get an alternate part number listed. If you don't know your VIN number for the car you're looking for, you can still get to it so long as you know more granular information about the manufacturer's model, classification designations. You start with the name code, which is by far the most familiar to anybody, then select the model. Vehicle classifications will be listed based on your first two selections, so you just pick from the list. I have 4-speed automatic and 5-speed California and federal emission cars to pick from. When you do it this way, none of the option codes, exterior, interior information, or the order number are going to populate. At that point, you can go into the illustrations and start to look up parts. Let's say we need a crankshaft from an early 92 all-wheel drive turbo eclipse. Most of that information we selected in the previous screen, but most DSMers know that halfway through the 92 production year, Mitsubishi switched from the 6-bolt to the 7-bolt engine design. Here we're in the rotating assembly subgroup of the engine main group. There's the crankshaft. Now watch what happens. Before you can get your part number, it wants to know what production date your car is so it can give you the right part number. The date is represented with the last two digits of the year first, and then the next two are the month. I believe the last digit is a revision number, although it might represent the production week. I'm not sure. Either way, the top line is 89 to 92 and a half, and the bottom line is May 92 to May 94. I have no idea why it's asking me this. Let's get some other stuff. Let's say I need a valve cover gasket set for my build. Going back to the main engine group, you look for the crankcase group, and oh look, there's a picture of a valve cover. In this subgroup, you find all the breather hoses, oil cap, PCV valve, cam seal, spark plug cover, and oh look, there's the valve cover gasket. Don't forget the ring seals that go around the spark plugs. And why not? Let's get a new PCV valve while we're in here. Once again, we're specifying the 89 and 92 and a half production because it doesn't remember. And when I say it doesn't remember, I mean it asks you this info for every part you select. And now finally we've got the part numbers to seal the crankcase up good and tight. Even though I have the ordered quantity set at 1, it shows the quantity that part number represents. Ordering one ring gasket set gives me all four gaskets for all four spark plug wells. On some parts it's important to verify this number. Make sure if you've got six in a box after disassembling your engine that your quantities are correct when you're placing your order. Let's try yet another vehicle. Now let's say I'm looking for a body part. How about the front bumper on a 2GA Eclipse? Go to the body group and don't let the pictured 1G stop you on the front bumper selection. Now that we're clicked in, you see the 2GA bumper picture. Don't let the pictures throw you off. Everything's in here. Just don't expect it to give you prices or that you're going to be able to order that part from the dealership. A lot like this old iMac, at some point manufacturers stop making and selling replacement parts. At some point you have to rely on existing inventory in order to keep it functional. Usually the aftermarket picks up for service parts, but some things just won't be made anymore. If you're like me and love cool things, do your best to put the right parts back in it. Sometimes it's expensive, sometimes it's impractical, but some of the cars I looked up on here tonight are 22 years old. Get those parts while you still can. I've spent countless hours in this software. I'm going to be spending a lot more time in this software because putting a 6 bolt and a 7 bolt requires a lot of mixing and matching of parts, many of which I don't have yet. So if this sort of thing looks useful to your Mitsubishi build, then this video's intention has been to educate you that tools exist to make your build much easier. If you want to know what your VIN number means, they've been standardized since 1981. But the most granular info about what each placeholder means is on vfac.org. And the link to it is in the info section. 
Here you can disseminate its country of origin, make, safety equipment, drive train, price, class, body, year, etc. Handy stuff if you need to make up a VIN number to use in caps. If you're trying to find caps, Google is your friend. Google 3000 GT caps and click the first link. There's installation instructions and even a newer version than the one I have. There's other technical information on this site. I can't stress enough how awesome the people in the DSM community are for preserving and maintaining their contributions even when they move on to other things. Fade to cat.